Well, hello, fellow modelers and any others who may have just dropped by for a look-see. Welcome back to Jet Scale Models. Today we're going to be looking at the third chapter in the RFM Leopard 2 Power Pack Kit. At this point, we are going to start working on painting the transmission and the air cooling units. And the first thing I'm, I did was to prime out the cooling units with some Mr. Surfacer White. This is a departure from my usual Mr. Surface Finisher 1500 Black, but my thinking is it might be a better underpainting for the aluminum paint that I plan to paint on top of this. I have not used it that much before as well and I wanted to see how it behaved. Next up, we'll take a look at priming out the 3D printed power pack maintenance stand for which I'm going to use Mr. Surfacer Mahogany Primer. The reason I'm using this rusty color is because it will provide the underpainting when I go to do the chipping later to show wear and tear. Next up, I'm going to paint the gearbox with a primer, and for that, I've returned to the favorite Black 1500 Mister Surface Finisher. But because there was still a little bit of the mahogany in the cup, you're seeing a little bit red as I start to paint this black. It's not really that important that it's got to be black, black. But very quickly, after I refill it with some more of the 1500 black, it does turn black. Here I am painting the top frame that the cooling units sit on top of. This is the 3D printed sling that I assembled earlier. They hook this up to the power pack and use it to remove it from the tank or to place a new power pack into a tank. You can see everything is nicely primed out. Here's a few beauty shots. So next up, I'm going to paint the transmission system with a humbrol enamel paint. Now I've been doing this model building for quite a number of years now, probably about three decades or more. So of course I have collected a lot of paints over the years that I have used. So back in the day I used to have humbrol paint and I still use them. Even though I use lacquers for the most part now, I still have the humbrols in my quiver 
to use whenever I might need something that is provided by that line. In this case, I'm using Humbrol number 150. I've decided that I'm not going to use just one green to paint all the different parts of this engine slash transmission power pack kit. Because in my mind, all these different parts are interchangeable and perhaps during maintenance periods, a part was taken off of a donor power pack or maybe from the spare parts department. For the cooling unit base, I'm using Humbrol 149 enamel. This may represent a newer looking color and a newer part. It's maybe a brand new part that they just received into the shop and installed on this power pack. I'm going to use some old testers clear gloss coat. It's a gloss lacquer. And I'm going to put that on just to protect the paint for when I come back to do some washes and other aging processes. The enamel paint does not interact well with the petroleum based thinners that are in most of the washes that we use. Whether it's homemade stuff made from oil paints and paint thinner or store bought materials. What I am doing here is I'm introducing some different rust shades and tones to the underpainting, like a little bit hotter or darker in an attempt to portray subtle variances to the rust chips that will be exposed with further hairspray techniques down the road. I'm most likely going overboard with that but the artistic brain of mine likes to take me down roads that maybe I don't need to go down. So here's a couple of pictures. The color is a little bit off here. It seems a little washed out, but you get the idea. So now I'm using some Mr. Surfacer 1500 black to create shadows and darkness within the recesses of the cooling unit fans. see here I'm cutting some evergreen stock tubage to make a couple of handles using some CA glue to attach short pieces of rod to the underside of the cooling units I can grasp them with one of my paint clips
This makes airbrushing them with the aluminum paint a lot more convenient. So now I'm using Mr. Color Aluminum to paint out the cooling unit assemblies. As you can see, prior to doing this, I actually went back into some of those areas on the sides of the units with 1500 black Mr. Surfacer. So here's a couple of shots of the finished product with the aluminum color. So now what I'm doing is I'm putting a tester's gloss coat on these parts. Again, for when I come back and do some chipping and washes and aging. There's more modern things to use besides this tester's lacquer clear coat. But you know, it's on my shelf, it works great and I'm going to use it up. Next up is I'm going to spray a couple of layers of hairspray onto the rust colors that are on this metallic maintenance base. I do this in preparation for when I'm going to do some paint chips further down the line. You can't see very clearly here, but I am spraying hairspray onto this aluminum paint as well. The sling gets the same treatment as well. Next, I'll paint out this maintenance base with some Tamiya acrylic flat white that I have thinned with water. I don't use any other thinners when I do my paint chips like this. I find that the flat paints from Tamiya mixed with water give me the best results and the best control. It's good to start with a few dust coats at first. It takes a few passes to build up a full coat. Because I thin the Tamiya flat white so much with the water, it does take a few passes to build it up properly. Next up, we'll use some Tamiya flat green and paint out the sling.
All right, let's try to get some of this chipping action to happen now that everything is dry. And I'm using an old brush dipped in water. And I'm just going to keep playing with it until it starts getting up underneath that paint and hits the hairspray. And then once the moisture hits the hairspray, it reactivates. And when it reactivates, it, it can no longer adhere to the rust color paint. And it starts to come away. I've got a fairly thick coat of white on here because I wanted a stark contrast. But you can see I'm getting some nice chips now. I want this base to look fairly old and well used, so I'm kind of having a little bit of fun taking as much off as I am. So while I'm doing this, I'm thinking about where would it get hit, where would it get some aging, where would people brush up against it or tools or metal parts or something like that. And here I'm doing the same thing with the sling part. Just taking some water on a brush, reactivating the hairspray and creating that chipped effect. So now I'm going to use some of the AK Rust Wash just to help accentuate the rusting of this metallic part. And I'm really looking to almost stain the white as well next to these openings. I'll introduce some paint thinner to get it to move the way I want it to move and to thin it out here and there and and then I'm going to come back with a cotton bud that's got a little bit of paint thinner in it just to remove any of the excess So here you can see I'm using a little bit of thinner just to break it up, thin it out, move it around. Okay, here I'm coming in with a cotton bud that's got a little bit of paint thinner on it just to soak up any of the excess rust wash. So 
So here I'm taking off some of the green and exposing some of the aluminum metallic color underneath. So with the hairspray sprayed on top of this aluminum, I'm able to come in there and using water, remove any of the paint that I don't want to be there. I could have masked off the side here and gotten the same effect, but you can see that the paint is easily removed with a little bit of water and a little bit of elbow grease. All right, now that the sides are all cleaned off, I can start working on the top. This is the other unit. I have to repeat everything again. This is the second one and I'm repeating the same steps here. So I'm going to paint out these cooling fans again, the actual fan blades, with some Humbrol silver paint. Humbrol is a great paint for hand brushing.
It's just there's two of these. I don't want you to get confused. You can see that the green paint is quite flat. So I've got to repeat that on the second one as well. You're probably asking yourself, why didn't I just mask off that circular area back when I first painted it with the silver colors? And I guess I'm kind of asking myself that as well, but this is just how it worked out this time. Now we're ready to start getting into some washes. Now what I should have done, maybe, is at least done a clear coat on this aluminum stuff because it's kind of like reactivated a bit. It didn't reactivate to the point where I had to just stop everything and strip the paint off, but I think you can see as I go along here in the brush there, there is a tendency for some of the silver to lift off. That's the nature of metallic colors though, in that they are basically just metallic flakes suspended in a binder. And they do have a tendency to be more vulnerable. And now, here I'm just doing some oil-based wash. I'm actually using an AK wash for this. The reason I'm doing this is so I can bring out the detail of the cooling fins with having some dark wash sink into the depths of it. The washes are now done and it's time to focus in on the engine stand again. And what I want to do here is I'm using some of the Life Color Dust number no. 1 paint for the first time. I've never really used that before, but I wanted to try it out. I usually use Tamiya Buff, which you'll see me use later on here. But I wanted to try this dust paint from Life Color that comes with the Rust Set. I don't see a lot of people using it and I've never really used it before. It's a little white for me, but it'll add another layer of aging.
So once I've done that, I'm coming in with some Tamiya buff color mixed with water and I'm applying it to where, you know, dust would build up. I'm also applying it to these cooling fins. This thing sitting in the back of the Leopard probably gets quite dirty and dusty. So I'm able to manipulate the buff paint with water and move it around, take it away. So now the cooling units get a dust effect as well using some highly diluted to me a buff color and I'm putting it everywhere and then I'm coming back with the paintbrush to lift it off where I don't want so much and I'm using some water to dilute it even more but the whole idea here is to give it a nice sort of dust accumulation. Yeah, so I'm just using some water here to thin it all down and make sure it gets a nice even coating. You can see that I'm using quite a bit of water to dilute what's on there. And now the sling gets the same treatment. Some good old buff XF57. that is quite diluted. I could have put the decals on at this point, but my head of steam was sort of just wanting to get this dust layer done. So now that everything is dry, I've got a Q-tip and I've got some water on it. And because the Tamiya buff is on there very thinly, I'm able to remove some of the excess and I'm leaving it mostly where parts are coming together, the different metal pieces in the corners and whatnot. I want the white to show through pretty cleanly in some areas. But because the Tamiya buff has been diluted so much with the water, there's not much of a binder there. And then after doing that, I'm coming back in with some of the AK rust wash 
just to uh, give it a little bit more flavoring. Okay, here's the engine parts and uh, a couple of the what I believe to be some kind of air filtration system. They've been uh, nicely chipped up and now they have a clear coat, a lacquer clear coat on them. I'm going to be doing the same thing that I just completed with the air cooling unit and the transmission. And I'm going to use some of the AK Interactive enamel wash for NATO vehicles and using some paint thinner so that I can control how strong I'm putting it on I'm going through this whole area just to give everything a nice wash the wash helps bring out some of the details but I'm going to be diluting it quite a bit with some paint thinner I want it mostly to go into the recesses and not so much on all these sort of flat areas. Kill me again, Mr. Bartender, please. I need a shot and I'm begging on my knees. Okay, now that the wash has been applied, I can come back in there with a Q-tip and remove some of the excess. And also what I can do is just put a very minuscule amount of paint thinner on the end of the Q-tip or cotton bud and that will help remove some of the more stubborn stuff. So what I'm trying to do here is just clean off the major top surfaces and leave the wash mostly in the recesses. This is the first time I've ever built this kit, so I'm definitely getting some lessons as I built this one. And when I go to build the next one, I definitely will have some clearer ideas of what I want to do. Alright, so now these air cleaning units are going to get the same cleanup. Removing any of the excess. Now that things have sort of had a chance to set up a bit. So the Q-tips got a little bit of paint thinner on it just so that it can reactivate the wash a little bit and it helps it come away. So there's two of these and as you can see the colors are a little bit different like for different parts of it. I could have even done a little bit more with that after I've looked at some references. There's even some more marked departures and 
some areas are one kind of a green and another green over here. Okay, now what I'm going to do here is the uh, good old buff slash dust treatment. And I'm using just a little bit of buff with a lot of water. And I'm going to go through all these parts like I did before and just give them all a nice layer of dust. So yeah, if you like what I'm doing here, consider subscribing so you don't miss anything going forward. I'm hoping to uh, keep adding more and more videos to my channel. And uh, if you subscribe, you don't have to miss out. And please leave a comment in the comment section if there's anything that you'd like me to take a look at or if you have any suggestions on how I can make my videos better. Alright, well, I think that's it for this video. Um, I've got another one coming and it will include the final uh, detailing of the painting and applying of the decals. So make sure you drop by to see the conclusion of this RFM Leopard 2 A6 Power Pack Kit from Ryfield Models. I can highly recommend it. I could have added a little bit more uh, detail with some things like uh, maybe some wiring and a few other tubages, but I think just as it is, I think it's a fine kit. 